so much for agreeing to chat to us today. It is an absolute privilege chatting to you, and I've got to say congratulations on such a fantastic film. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'm very, very lucky and fortunate that uh, Sean Baker gave me a shot, and um, I feel happy that I delivered for him because he really uh, took a chance with me. So tell us a little bit about what were your first thoughts when you read the script for this film because it is such a intense but wonderful film what was your thoughts when you first read the script uh my thoughts were holy sh- can i swear yep yep my thoughts were holy shit i haven't had to memorize this much lines of dialogue in a very long time and your muscle of your memory is not unlike your body muscle in that it atrophies if you don't use it and i hadn't really acted much in the last you know decade maybe a couple little indie movies here or there whatever but that muscle hadn't been used so i was like i opened the script and i saw that i was on page one all the way to the end and there's like five page monologues where you know you can't take a breath so i was intimidated by the amount of work i was going to have to do and uh but yet excited for the challenge so i basically deleted all my social media i keep my phone on air i deleted off my phone i keep my phone on airplane mode and all i did was just memorize the heck out of it and um and then i didn't have any time to do any like character you know backstory none of that actory you know stuff i just used my imagination i went with my gut and played with it and uh i think it worked out so it was intimidating but i embraced the challenge was this a role that you had to audition for, or did Sean already know about you and your career and approach you for the role? Uh, both. So he had been following my career since MTV back in the 90s. Um, he knew who I was, and I was on his radar, he told me, for a long time. And he got my phone number through a mutual friend, um, July 2020, last year, and reached out and said, hey, I'm doing this movie, I know it's last minute, can you put yourself on tape right now? So I put myself on my phone and I just basically did this one small part of the opening scene of the movie and sent it to him. And he said, okay, I need you here in three days. Um, and I had, they rented me a car and I drove right to Texas. Um, and we just started working immediately. So it happened very quick. Uh, also to add to that, he said, I don't have time to deal with an agent or a manager. Do you trust me? And I said, I, I don't know you, but I do trust you. I, I've seen his movies. I knew who he was. I could just tell he wasn't, like, pulling a fast one. He said, you know, you're not going to make any money. I'm not going to make any money. We're just going to make a really cool movie. Uh, just get over here. And I don't want to deal with an agent or a manager because they're going to slow it down. So I just went and shot the movie. Aside from learning the lines, how do you... Uh, explore a character and get into that character within three days i mean mickey rock went and hung out with old wrestlers to do the wrestler you wouldn't have even had that opportunity to talk to people that had worked in the industry so how do you prepare yourself to to become that character in three days well you don't you don't prepare i mean i uh which is sort of interesting because that's like my motto in life is I really don't like plans and overthinking things. I think that's often when the the, the, the life is best when you're just surprised and you don't have expectations and you don't overthink it for me, you know? I mean, I got an RV, I call it the no plan van. I just take the RV and I just drive off into whatever direction. And it always ends up being magical because I don't know where I'm going. And I feel like that's how this movie was, is that I just didn't have any expectations. Any, th- There was no time to think. You just did it, and you went with your instinct. And I feel like we don't do that enough. Um, that's why improv is always so magic. You let us improv. You know, if you watch those shows like Impractical Jokers or any of those old improv shows, it's magic because it's just happening for real. It's not over-rehearsed and robotic. Definitely. And... The other thing that really struck me about this character was that nearly everybody at our screening the other day had a different opinion of him. I saw him as a character who was kind of almost trapped in a situation that he really wants to try and find a way out of. How did you view the character when you first read the script? I just saw that he was a survivor and a hustler. 
and that he was completely oblivious to the things he was doing. So that was the saving grace was that maybe he's not doing these things to hurt people. He doesn't really know what he's doing. And then there's a little room for sympathy for the audience to maybe just a little window for the audience to say, oh, maybe, uh, you know, I want to see what happens to this guy. Because if he's just an asshole for two hours, it's hard to stay invested and care what the outcome is for him. So if you just make it a little room for the audience to feel conflicted, it'll work. And, and that's what that was really the only thought process I had was. To, to, to make him somewhat likable and boyish and charming and, and maybe he doesn't have bad intentions. How did you go about that process of making him likable? Because like I said, it he does feel like a character that some audience members may not like. So how do you go about approaching that to make him boyish and kind of likable? And is that something that you talk to the director about as well? I mean, I think he just saw me doing it in my initial audition. I think I just... You know, quite frankly, I probably, you know, I feel like I got through a lot of life uh, by just throwing on a little charm and charisma and making people laugh. And that's sort of been my survival mechanism in real life. Like I, I um, yeah, I always like to make people laugh and feel good. That's, you know, that's what life's about. So I just applied that to this character, even though he's doing reprehensible things. He's a real charmer you know, and a trickster, and uh, a sed- and he seduces people, um, you know, it, the only difference is he's doing it with, you know, uh, the stakes are very different, he's, I, I, I'd like to think in real life, I never would want, I'm very self-aware and don't want to hurt anybody, and he's just ruining everything at every turn, so I just use that, I just use some, like, you know, the boyish charm that I probably had used a lot when I was younger. Yep. Now, Sean's films are all very natural feeling. Of course, we saw that with Tangerine, we saw it with Florida Project, and we see it again with this film as well. Tell us a little bit about what Sean is like as a director to work with, but also what's the set and the shoot like for you as an actor when you're working with Sean? So he's very open, he's very uh, thoughtful, uh, very um, good at communicating and asking questions, and he's open to notes and you would say like, what would you say right here? Does this feel natural for you to, does this line feel weird? Put it in your own words. And that freedom is really nice because then you don't feel like you have to say the line exactly. You know, there are some lines that had to be specifically what he wrote, but he was very loose in letting me improv and, and, and keep it loose. Um, and on set, it was very uh, hectic because of COVID. I mean, look, shooting a one, you know, point two million dollar movie in 2020 is ambitious enough. Um, but you add COVID, you add, uh, and all of the restrictions and testing and, and, and the stress of, you know, if anyone tested positive, we'd get shut down. I mean, I didn't even think we would get through the movie. And, and working with these first time local, you know, hires that have never been on a movie set that didn't understand, like, you know, how to, you know, act in a movie. And I had to help Sean with them. You know, with the technical stuff, like, you know, stand on your mark, the camera focuses on you, the lighting's on you, you can't just wander around, you need to stay here. Um, just little things like that made it never a dull moment. We were just riding an edge the whole time. And also being on location in Texas, does that make it feel more natural for you to get into character as well? Because you're not pretending that a, a side street in L.A. is actually Texas? A, a million percent. I mean, you know, when you're in the environment and you're feeling that Texas humidity and you're smelling the barbecue and the smells of the oil refinery and you're hearing the local people talk with that Texas, you know, twang in their voice, it makes my job easier because I'm playing in a real world as opposed to, like you said, on some fake set in Burbank with a bunch of extras who aren't from Texas and the fake wardrobe. I mean, it was, it, it couldn't be more real. I mean, the wardrobe, the people wore were theirs, the locations where we would just go to someone's house and rent their house and just walk into their home and use their house as the location. So it was just very uh, easy for me to pretend and play in that world because I was in it. Yeah, definitely. And you had some amazing co-stars as well. You had some really intense scenes with, Brie, tell us a little bit about what it was like working with Brie and what it was like in those really, really intense scenes between the two of you. Yeah, intense, like sexually or like emotionally? 
Um, emotionally, really, like the yeah, it's an interesting relationship that you two have at, between you as characters. But there was some really kind of intense scenes there, screaming at each other, and then, like you said, the next minute in bed with each other. So, what were they like to film those scenes? Well, she's, you know, she is a black belt in acting. And I remember showing up and meeting her and being intimidated because she is a New York theater actor. And me being in L.A. and sort of a guy who just did scary movie and sitcoms. And, like, I never was really, like, you know, I've done acting classes, but I never really considered myself to be, like, a tortured, you know, real theater actor. And she's, like really really good and it was intimidating but she made me raise the bar and she would you know it's, it's just like anything else it's like if i go play basketball with a bunch of guys who suck at basketball i'm not going to play very good but if i go play basketball with some guys who are really good i play better so it was kind of like that like she just made me raise the bar because she's so good and she would just you know make yeah she's just made my job uh, easier because I believed her. I'd be watching her act. And she's so good that it would be, I would, you know, really be reacting to her because she's so good. And then you had the opposite with Susanna because you were probably the more experienced actor um, with Susanna. How did you approach those scenes with Susanna knowing that she had less experience that, than you and that you were the more experienced actor? Well, that's exactly right. And with her, I felt the need to hold her hand and walk her through some of those things because she has, uh, she moved to LA to be an actor and she's a natural talent. So it wasn't like this was like, what is this, you know, acting, you know, she had the goods. She just didn't have the experience. So she would be a little nervous between takes. I would see her, I could tell she was nervous. And then as soon as the camera rolled, she would just lose all of it and just light up the screen, nail her lines. She was so good and then cut and then she would be like, oh, did I mess that up? And I'd say, no, you actually just killed it. And I'm surprised because I've been around actors who are much more experienced than you. And once it's lights, camera, action, they actually lock up, you know, and they actually get nervous when it's time to perform. And she was the opposite. She would be, you know, a little nervous between takes. And then as soon as the cameras rolled, she just uh, transformed. So I saw pretty quick that she was fine. Um, you know, on camera, um, I think it was more just the being on set for the first time like that was intimidating for her. So I just would just try to make her feel comfortable and help her relax and, you know, talk with her and just be a friend. Well, Simon, we are almost right out of time. So to finish up, what would you like to say to Australians out there who are thinking about going along and checking out Red Rocket on January 6th? Well, I think if anyone, Australians would get it because you guys have the best sense of humor and you, and, uh, you know, I love how I've lived there for a while and been in Australia so many times. Um, I feel like this movie, albeit that it's a dark comedy that you guys will really, uh, have a laugh and it's taking the piss and it's, you know, really showing uh, it's shining the light on kind of like America in a way that the rest of the world may see America, that America, you know, America's so divided right now and it's such a weird time that this movie is sort of a breath of fresh air um and you could just go you know put your brain under your seat for two hours and and be entertained um so i, I hope you all go check it out and have a laugh at my expense <laughs> definitely well simon thank